Hey, mate, what's good, sis? Danielle, how's it going? Gina, how you doing, sis? Y'all all right? y'all been up to how y'all night been doing or how y'all day been have your day been rather y'all been all right man i've been in deep deep in the bible street series that's what's up man i'm glad and since i was telling my wife about you and i'm telling her about your daughters as well and uh yeah she's very thankful of, of our father as well and like I said, you're gonna, you already making moves, sis. Uh, continue. I was talking to my brother the other day, and I was telling him how that everything is the same. From the good and the bad, they both function off this one word. From the good and the bad, they both function off this one word, and it's called consistency. Um, whatever you consistent in, that's what you become. Um, they say if a man go and work out once or twice, it doesn't change anything. It's not the going to work out that's changing it. It's the consistency in working out. Uh, he may go work out once, twice, and three times in a row. It's not going to make a change. But if he make the decision to be consistent and do it for three months, he sees the full change. And that happened even with bad things. You do it once or twice or three times and you liked it, but... You know, it didn't form a habit, but the more you continue to walk in the dark, that consistency builds a habit to walk in the dark now. And that's the same thing with the um, walking with the spirit. Do it consistently, daily, and watch how you just begin to transform. Don't allow, you know, when they say when you, when you, when you lose a weight, they say don't check the scale every day because you will be. You will be uh, upset because the scale ain't changed that one day how you want it. But they say check it periodically while you're being consistent. Then you will see the change. Don't worry if you may not see the change because you're reading your word consistently. Don't worry if you don't see it fast. But know that your spirit is changing. Knowing your situations will change. Know that you will be stronger than ever because you, you, you decided to keep going. You decided to be consistent. So yeah, even though I'm talking to you, man, this is for me. This is for all of us. Who <laughs> this is for each and every one of us. No matter if you just started or you still, if you've been doing this, keep going, keep being consistent. Because the Father said, those who endure, those who who continue to who 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 finish this race, that means we gotta consistently do this. I need three books of the Bible. Now, wow, you read three. That's what's up, sis. That's what's up. So yeah, that's that's what we're gonna talk about on here too. So I'm glad you're saying that. I was going good until my friend felt something happen at Bible study at church, and it was alarming. God be love. How you doing, sis? What was alarming, Daniel? And please, um, don't allow what happened to others for you to stop your relationship with the Father. Tracy, there you go, sis. How you doing? Hey, would be looking choppy like this? Hey, quick question, Tracy. Um, I don't know. On my end, it's looking like when I'm talking or moving, it's looking a little glitchy. Is it looking like that to y'all, or is it good? It's cool with y'all, then I ain't gonna worry about it. Uh, okay, it looks good. Okay. Now, okay, Daniel, good. I mean, I feel you. I, f- I put it like this. Never, never forsake your communication and relationship with the Father. That's the goal. I understand if sometimes we have to... And sometimes we got to separate from certain allegiance that we have, you know, come in contact with and certain people. 
Sometimes we're only into it. Sometimes we're with people for a season. I've learned that. Some people you're with there forever. Some people it's just for a season. And it is what it is. That's how it would be. And, um, but our relationship with the Father is not seasonal. It's for eternity. So long as you got that understood, Daniel, then that's what's up. But I understand sometimes, sometimes that happens. But uh, we live in an age now, if we live in an age that if someone do separate from a certain community, people people tend to think that you have gave up with God. <laughs> or if you're not with us, that means you're not following God anymore. And I really think that's one of the most foolish things. But continue to have your relationship with the Father and continue to... And to uh, that is what this is all about, y'all. We're reading... We're reading from Galatians 1, 10. Galatians 1, 10. Let's, 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 let's read this scripture, then we can keep going. Let's read the scripture right quick. It says right here, Obviously, I am not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. <laughs> if pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Obviously, I am not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ, sir. So that that just that just says it all right there. That our goal is to make sure that we're. That's why every time I end this live, I always go into speaking about that our truest relationship with the Father is shown when nobody else is watching. I say that consistently because I am a firm believer that our goal is to is to please the Father. I can I can it's good that I can be around you all or around family and friends and show and show my light. It's good that I can represent Jesus in front of others. That's excellent. That's the the Father wants us to show our light to others, but are you only showing it when you are amongst others? When, when others are around, is that's when you put on your light and when they're gone, you wind up looking back like the world again? That will tell you that you're doing it to please people. But if you in your alone times seeking the Father, you in your alone times receiving his light and bearing his light, seeking the kingdom, trying to represent Christ, that will tell you that you are not trying to win the approval of people, but you are trying to win the approval of God. That 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 whole action says that scripture right there. And that's our goal. That should be our number one priority is I am not doing this to make it. I am not doing this to look good in front of you. I am not doing this, even this lie. I am not doing this so y'all could think. Oh, this man is, this dude is a man of God. This dude must read the scriptures. This dude must, he must really be, you know, about the kingdom. <laughs> that's not the goal. If that's the, if those are your thoughts, then so be it. I'm, I'm fine with it. Thank God for it. But the goal is not to make myself look good. The goal is to preach the message of the kingdom of God. And I'm going to use any avenue that he gives me to do it. If he gives me the ability to go on live and talk to others and I'm able to communicate in that way, I'm going to use that gift to represent the kingdom of God. My mission and duty is to push his message and to let y'all see him. Like y'all can see me, but look past me and look at God. <laughs> That's why I say at all times, all glory to the Father. If you ever give me any type of praise, you any say any anything you say that's saying, oh, Richard, you did this great. You did that excellent. Cool. But I'm going to now redirect your praise and your thoughts back to the Father. Thank you. But all glory to the King. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for him, I couldn't have said that. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have done that. And if it wasn't for him, I would have done this. <laughs> if it wasn't for him, I would have said that foolishness. If it wasn't for him, I would have done that foolishness. So God keeps me from foolishness and he makes and he takes me to greatness. 
I can do all things great through him now. And I know how to now stop from doing foolishness through him now. So it's because my mindset is to please the father. My mindset is to how can I resemble you? So when others come around, I can shed a, I can shed some light that now they want to seek you. That is the goal of every believer. Because look, God is going to give you everything else. You don't, he tell you not to seek for the things, not to seek for the, the material things, not to not, not want for that. He just says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness. And I will add on everything else. I will give you everything else. I will give you the things you didn't even ask for. Solomon asked for him to give him wisdom and understanding on how to lead God's people. God said, I'm going to give you that and the things you didn't ask for just because you was asking the things that I want. God say, you can ask me for anything, but it has to be according to the word of God. He, he said, I will give you your heart's desires, but your heart's desires have to match the king's desires. Our heart's desires cannot match the world's desires. If your heart is matching the world's desires, that does not that benefit, which God said that I will give you everything you desire, that benefit does not apply to those who are seeking the world. That benefit package belongs to the citizens of the kingdom of God who heart is aligned with the kingdom. So, yeah, man, these little these little tips and tricks of the kingdom of God that we have to understand. And once you start to understand it, you start to use it and apply it with wisdom and let me read some of this all right um be a vessel of the most high facts right, i'm gonna go i'm gonna go higher up so i can read some and see if anybody got questions true brother what's good day there you go what's good y'all 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 clean hey nixon how you doing nate there you go bro nate dog in the building no clout chasing facts hey christina Welcome here. Okay. Um, that's right. Heck yes. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to read this. Be a vessel of the most high. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. I do great things to the uh, next. Come on, man. We love you, bro. We love you. We know. First, seek the kingdom of God and everything will be added into you. Facts, Matthew 6, 33. Let's get it. Exactly. We get our heart's desires when we match God's desires. Don't seek material things, just what you need. Facts. And the Father knows everything you need, man. That's the, he, he didn't basically set it all up for us. He set it up for our, our benefit. He set it. God set all this up for us to succeed. I was listening to Dr. Miles Monroe. Gotta stay long, got church to my. All right, bro, have a good one, man. Be smooth. Look, God, Dr. Miles Monroe said this, and he said it so greatly. He said, anybody that make iPhones or those who make Samsungs or those who make cars, when they make their product, they don't make it to fail. They don't, they don't, they don't make it and push it out there to fail. They make it and push it out there because they want it to succeed. Now, before they push it out there, they have it in the lab and they do tests and trials and errors and they look at the parts where it may fail at, they look at the parts where it's succeeding at, and then whatever parts they got the cracks in, where it may mess up or slow up at, they will fix it. They will fix it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sis. <laughs> Tracy, thank you. My bad. I thought that was somebody else. Thank you, sis. I'm sorry about that. Apparently, I got an issue with that. <laughs> it's probably, hey, Tracy, what, this is like the fifth time this happened? So now that I know, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> now I'm all embarrassed and stuff. All right, so where I was at? Um, <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all messed up right now. Um, yeah, we do it all the time. So God, whenever they push the phone out, basically, they push it to succeed when, when the product is out. And our father is doing the same thing. 
He has created us and he pushed us out here. Everybody who is alive today, God has made the product and now he put it out into the world for it to succeed, not to fail. Each and every one of us on the back of our neck, basically, you know how tags where it say made by China or made in USA, we are made in heaven. And underneath your skin, it should say made in heaven. And we are supposed to be products of greatness. We're supposed to do the things that resemble the father of what he aligned us to do. But we had an enemy, of course, come in and try to, you know, hijack the software and the hardware. And he tried to implant his system. He tried to implant his virus in it. And he did. He implanted his virus in all of God's products. But guess what? The master cleaner came. The 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 creator of the pro, the, the product, the 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 savior of the product came and he fixed the virus. He destroyed the virus and fixed the product rather. And all those who have received the cleaner <laughs> should now be walking as the father, as the master builder in, intended for his creation to walk. And that's how we're supposed to be living this, man. And I love it. I love seeing it in that fashion. And let me read some of this. Please check the box. Up. <laughs> For real, bro. Please check the box. Male or female. <laughs> All right, man. You know what? I'm done with y'all. Y'all got <laughs> Let me turn this air on. You got to be over here hot, dog. Oh, duh. <laughs> hey, you see how they do me, y'all? You, Tracy, y'all, y'all gonna do that to me like that? All right. God told me to tell you to cash at me a hundred. Oh. If you say so, I could cash at you that monopoly money. How's that? It's cool. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Hey, I know it's all love, bro. I, I am the main one with a sense of humor so i love it when others have it so let's put that work in oh man why disrespecting me sir thank you tracy whatever like i say whatever you see whatever you, our moderators whatever y'all see fit let it be I called him a female sir before I work. Yeah, all, I, I hate when I make that mistake, y'all. I really do. But I'll be thankful that when I make the mistake that they don't take it, you know, they don't take it personally. But I'm thankful of that. We brothers and sisters, we keep it real. Facts. I'm glad we get to laugh. Oh, yeah. It is embarrassing. It is. But, you know, I, I already know this is not the last time, so... This is just building my strength. This is building me on how I know how to handle the situation when I call someone bro again or sis when they <laughs> when they actually not that. So yeah, my strength is being built in this. So yeah, y'all, I want y'all to realize that for now on, um, I guess this is an opportunity for all of us to, to meditate on um, Galatians 1.10. Hey man, I love y'all too, Nate. Real talk. I did the same thing to poor Till two nights, <laughs> two nights ago. <laughs> I want each and all. I want every one of y'all. Our our duty is to meditate on God's word. Um, if if it's from you reading it, if you heard someone else read it, if you heard your pastor, your teacher, your leader read it, um, you went on TikTok and you heard something. You went on Facebook and you saw something. It's our job to meditate on the word. Everything that happens, happens for a reason. So when when the Lord allows his scripture to come past you, we must take the time to meditate on it. And we also must take the time to meditate it on our own, to meditate day and night on God's word, to make sure that you are reading his word, y'all. Because we have to realize when you read God's word, this is more than just reading. This is actually feeding our spirit. Like your spirit should know, like right now, your spirit should be filled. Your spirit should be 
eating when you realize that the scriptures is telling us to make sure that we're not trying to win the approval of people, but we're doing it because we're, we're winning the approval of God. And if pleasing people was my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. You have just ate a mouthful of healthy vegetables to tell you that this is how us citizens of the kingdom of God supposed to live. We should make sure our motives, our motives align with what this word say. And I don't know about y'all, but I have to make sure I continuously check my motives. I have to continuously ask the father to please make my motives right. Make me sincere when I do this. Make make sure that anything that's trying to creep up that's fleshly and please remove that because we know how the flesh can get. We know how the flesh can get. It's no point of us acting like we new to this. You know how your flesh is. You individually know how your flesh react to certain things. Your flesh, the flesh that follows you, may not react to the same things mine react to. But you know what yours react to. So don't don't act and make it seem as if it's not there. You must know your enemy. Your enemy is your flesh. This is the this is the perfect example when it say keep your friends close but your enemies closer. Because your enemy, which is the flesh, is always with you. <laughs> So, because you now are understanding and learning how your flesh operate, it's time for you to operate in the spirit to combat that. And the only way to combat your flesh is to operate in this word. The only way to beat your flesh is to be walking with the word, is to be walking with the king, is to be walking in the spirit. So if you know your flesh got an issue with that, know it, know it. Oh, like... My flesh probably don't have a, a strong urge for that, but I know it got a strong urge for that. So I'm going to be smart and know where I should be and where I shouldn't be. Know where I should go and what I should what, what I should watch and what I shouldn't watch. <laughs> if you know your flesh got a problem with drinking, but you know the Father gave you the strength and you're delivered from it, Deliverance means you now have the strength and the ability to say no to your flesh. But if you know your flesh have a strong urge for drinks, why keep walking in the bar? Why keep tempting yourself? Stay away from it. You are delivered now. So now I don't even want to be in it. I don't even want to entertain my flesh anymore. To give it the feeling if I want to do it or not. Now you're putting yourself. He said, God don't tempt us. He said, you are tempted by your own lust. You are tempted by your own temptations. Now you just placed yourself in a bar to tempt yourself. <laughs> when you didn't have to. Oh, man. I struggle with this. You talking about the Anthony, which part? You talking about the drinking part? Before you, Pedro, showing what I struggle with and I stay away. That's what's up, man. And, hey, that's being honest. That's evaluating yourself. The Lord said evaluate yourself, right? So we also have to look in the mirror and say, okay, I know when I was walking in sin, when I wasn't with the Lord, when I was walking with the sin, when I was walking in flesh, rather, my fleshly desires was smoking cigarettes. My fleshly desires was drinking. My fleshly desires was this and that. So now that the Holy Spirit has given me the strength to say no to it, I now have the strength as well to stay away from those things. I don't want to I don't want to rile up my my flesh to try to attack it because I'm giving it leeway to do so. But that's why we have to that's why we say you got to stay more connected in the word, because the more you in the word, the more you stay away from it, the more you strong enough to say no to it. But the less I eat the word of God, the more I'm liable to say, let me get one cigarette. 
me get one drink. Yeah, just one. I know I'm I know I'm two years in. Let me get one drink. You know why? Because I haven't been eating the word of God. I just stopped. So all of a sudden my flesh has now crept in and he's taken advantage of the situation. Meditate day and night, and only then you will obey the word, and only then you shall succeed. Man, I will continue to preach that scripture. What's up, sis? Telling my flesh no. Oh, telling your flesh no. So, I'm, so Anthony, Anthony, I'm being 100% real. You will not be able to tell your flesh no if you're not eating God's word daily. I promise you. I promise you. The only reason we can say no is because the more I strengthen my spirit, the more I weaken my flesh. But the less I shrink, the less I strengthen my spirit, the more my flesh increases on its own. I promise you, you can read your word and focus on God every now and then. And every now and then you will succeed and say no to your flesh. Or you can consistently, consistently, daily, making sure you're feeding your spirit consistently daily making sure you look into the holy spirit and i promise you bro i promise you i'm not saying it will be i'm not saying it will be easy but you will have no ready you will no you will be so no <laughs> it gives you that strength bro it's like no that's how i was able to say no for two years now i've been saying no to two years from drinking smoking and pornography for two years now because of this because of this word giving me the strength the holy spirit giving me the strength to say no <laughs> man that is the only thing that's now you can use your own strength to say no your own strength allows you to say no a few times i'm gonna be honest with you your strength is strong enough for you to say no few times but your strength is double minded your strength is like a, it's, it's tossed like wherever the wind blows that's where your strength goes one minute your strength could be up here but in a moment where somebody did something that made you mad your strength go down and now you follow whatever your strength at but when you follow God's strength God's strength doesn't blow here and there God's strength isn't double-minded. So when you just stay at his strength, it's no more going back down. Man. Let me read some of this. That's where it starts. No, I'm one year smoke-free. One year, all glory to the king. That's what's up. Keep that up. That one year about to turn to two years. Drug and alcohol free since 315-2016. Man, Chris, what's good, bro? Man, y'all see what the Holy Spirit can do to people? Thank you, God, that you freed me from myself, made hellish prison. Man, absolutely. Replace your addiction with Jesus. Facts. Yes, I struggle with what I watch. Yeah, that was one of mine, too. That, um, Anthony. But I'm telling you, I love when the Bible is well used in the hands of a believer. Man, all oh, glory to the King, Chris. Hallelujah. Facts. Yes, Anthony, bro. So like I said, I've learned this as well. The more, as I said, the more you seek him, the more you get stronger. But we also have learned that some things come out by fasting and praying. So even though I was reading God's word consistently, he also gave me the strength to fast. Fast, and prayed, and consecrated for, for 16 days. And I'm only saying this now and boasting on the Lord now because it didn't happen. And I'm only using it as a testimony. But I fasted and consecrated and prayed for 16 days. And now I'm two years without these 
these things. So some things, a lot of things come out with prayer, but some things, bro, only come out through fasting and prayer. So if you know, if you see that you have, you said you accidentally, could you unmute him? Hey, Anthony, if you on here, we made a mistake and muted you, but she about to unmute you if she can. Stay on there, Anthony. Don't leave off. Uh, uh, how do I fix it? I mean, the pen is kind of... Oh, <laughs> she said I meant the pen. Let me see. Let me see if I can do something for Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can, I'm trying to find him, sis, I don't know if I can see him, let me see something real quick, comments below, hey Tracy, it's good sis, it's alright, um, we make mistakes, we all do, trust me, so don't even worry about it, um, Anthony, I don't know if you're still on here or not. If you're still on here and you can't comment, we, we all made the mis we made a mistake and muted you. But oh, there you go. There we go. Nathan, you got it back on there. Okay, cool. Tracy, don't worry about it. It's all good, sis. We good. We good. We good. Teamwork. All right, there we go. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back now. All right, all right so I saw somebody ask me uh, what kind of fast did I do. Um, okay, there you go, Anthony. We apologize. But um, the type of fast I did was no food. And I only drunk water for 16 days. I did no food, and I also consecrated. Consecrated mean I pushed away all entertainment. I pushed away stuff like movies, video games, social media, anything that was entertaining, I pushed it away. And I only read the word of God. I only watched things that was that was talking about the, our, the kingdom of God. And I prayed. And for 16 days, that's what I did. And now I'm two years without any of these things. <laughs> yep, just no, yep, no food. Um, there's two types of fast, Christina. There's the there's the fast with no food, and there's the the Daniel fast. Daniel fast had the fast where he didn't eat pleasurable foods for 21 days, but he only ate like fruits and vegetables and, and certain things that wasn't pleasurable. And I normally tell people that if do that type of fast if you have medical problems where if you need food to take your pills but you still wanted to fast I suggest they do that fast but if they wanted to fast to get closer to the father and they don't have any physical illnesses anything like that I suggest fast now Christina don't get me wrong you do not have to do 16 days you don't even have to do 5 days you can do 1 day you can do 2 days the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit knows me. He know what type of person I am. And I needed to get some stuff off me. I needed, ever since that fast, that fast just didn't take things off me, but that fast added things upon me. That fast just, it took away some sinful desires, but it also added for me to now be in the kingdom of God. Both foot, both feet planted firmly. It now made me live this lifestyle 
that this is now a lifestyle now. This is not no every now and then or when I feel like it, that this is it. There's no options. I don't I don't have the option to live how I want to live. If I claim to live in the kingdom of God, there's no options. There's whatever the standards that my father says, that's the standard we live by. I just made a video that said that the standard of the kingdom of God is to forgive others as God forgives me. I don't have an option to not forgive you. I don't I don't have the ability. I don't have the ability to say I'm not forgiving them. Nope, I'm not forgiving them. I don't have that ability to say that. I'm not living in the world. Now, if I lived in the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness gives you the ability to say, I'm a forgive. And the kingdom of darkness gives you the ability to say, I'm not forgiving. But when you live in the kingdom of God, it's only we forgive those as God forgives us. <laughs> so I've learned that. And I'm learning that daily with all of the, like with every avenue of my life. I'm learning that more and more and more and more that there is no option to align with the world and align with the kingdom of God. He said, you, 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 can't, lo you can't serve two masters. You can't. Satan will allow you to serve two masters. Satan will allow you to go into your church building on Sunday and represent God and he will allow you to come out of that building and represent him he allows that God doesn't allow that God knows that if you love one you will hate the other <laughs> so yeah that, that fast allowed me to see that that fast allowed me to bring the kingdom message into my home and represent it with my actions and now my wife and my children they saw that and now they're representing the kingdom of God more than they ever have because of that fast so that fast did way more than just break off porn and drug and and and, and alcohol and cigarettes that was just the that was just the stuff that was just in my way but when God moved the stuff out of my way he said, now I will bless you. <laughs> so yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah, sis. Yeah. So what if I were to have a day I fail, but get back, get back up. So Christina, I, my, my, my son asked me that question. My son asked me that question. This is how I look at lukewarm. And this is how I feel the Bible is stating lukewarm. Lukewarm is someone who's claiming, who's claiming to live in the kingdom of God, but wholeheartedly live for the kingdom of darkness. Lukewarm is someone who makes sure they go to the Sunday service building on Sunday so they can look the part and please men. But as soon as they're out of the sight of men, they're ready to look like the world again. Oh, I just did that to please you. Now, someone who is walking for the kingdom of God, they will make mistakes. They may fall seven times, but a righteous man get back up because we're all living this new life called new creation in Christ. We are all born into this new life now trying to say no to our temptations and no to the world. So sis, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, especially as you mature, that's why he say mature in me, because he know we're going to slip a little bit. Before I got done, fully stopped smoking, I was still, I hit it. Oh, man, father, I said I was done. Okay. Then I go a few days and I hit it again. And father, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep speaking that I am done with this. I am done with this. It took me maturing until he fully gave me the strength that I said no to it. And I was fully done. So don't look at yourself as lukewarm when you're trying to seek the Father and you may make mistakes. Do, is that, do you understand that, sis? Uh -huh. I love that video of forgiveness you made. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Thank you. 
Yeah, me and my wife had that conversation. And I said, man, this is a good, that's a good topic to talk about. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in a second then since you saw it. Um, I've struggled with what I watched since seven years old. It's the only thing I can't break. Yeah, Anthony, fasting, bro. Fasting. I, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. If you was to fast and pray and tell the father that you want this off, I, I guarantee it. You will be stronger than what you are now. Hope I'm not sharing too much, bro. Bro. No. You, you, you. This is what helps us. This is what help others. You're confessing to one another so we may pray for one another is what the scriptures say and this is what bringing others together and this is what making others feel comfortable to say this is what i'm going through how do i fix it so man please share amen i guess i'm scared because when i fell a long time ago stayed down for seven years because i was yes, yes i do All right, um, Christina, yeah, I get you. Trust me, sis. It took me, it took me 16 years to stop. It took me 16 years to stop falling in that way. But as I told, as I told Anthony, when the Holy Spirit told me to fully seek Him, He told me to stop trying to stop those things. And he told me to start seeking him. Stop trying to use your own strength to stop doing these things. Start using my strength, son, by seeking me and watch how I give you the strength to now say no to those things. So, sis, if you fast as well, fast as well, pray as well, seek the spirit of God as well and watch how you will not walk in fulfill the lust of your flesh. I promise you. I can only promise you this because this is what the words say. Can you pray for me? I want to sleep. I went to sleep earlier. Something held me down and attack. Loving life. I definitely can. What's your name, sis, if you don't mind? I woke up crying. I died. In, um, if you don't mind, let me know your name right quick. I died in December 2020. It took me 17 minutes to resist it. Wow, you died then, and now you got the opportunity to look and resemble like Christ even further. Hey, Anthony, man, I mean, don't feel that. Don't feel that to the point where you're feeling condemnation. That's what Satan wants. Satan will glorify that. If you feel upset of what you've been doing, that's good. I'm telling you, sometimes being mad at ourselves and feeling ashamed of what we're doing causes that that transformation for us to fully repent. You ever heard the, the thing that you ain't done with it because you ain't mad at it? When that whenever you get mad at it, that's when you change. Because I got sick of it. I got sick of failing. I got sick of being lukewarm. I got sick of walking in the flesh consistently. I got sick of it. I wanted true change. And I saw that I was living a foolish lifestyle. I saw that I was lukewarm, bro. I saw it. And the Holy Spirit allowed me to see it. And I was ashamed of it. And I was so ashamed of it, I began to be mad at it. And I said, the only way I will change this is if I dwell with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. So I said, Holy Spirit. God, take me. I want all of you. I forsake all of me. And that's when things began to become serious, bro. So if you feel that way, feel that way enough where now it's conviction instead of condemnation. Because the Holy Spirit gives conviction. It's the enemy that gives condemnation. Okay, let me see, let me see. Tierra. Tierra, is that is that how I say it? Therefore, there is no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. Facts, Tracy. Thank you. I was in a Bible study all day today and praying. As soon as I lay down, I try to fall asleep. 
Tierra. So look, <laughs> Tierra, I think I've been having that same thing since I was a kid. Um, I would go to sleep and something was holding me down. And it got to the point where as I got older, I started to see things in my sleep. And then it got to the point as I got even older, I couldn't even breathe sometimes. Where I was feeling like I couldn't breathe, but it was something that was holding me down. And as I got closer to God and started to scream Jesus in that moment, it would go away. Now... I noticed the less I was in his word and less I was focusing on the father, it was happening. The more I started to focus on the father, the less it happened. But it didn't stop it 100%. But sometimes the enemy still tried to take you down and he still tried to mess with you. But I do believe that whenever you are in that situation, it's dark with red eyes. See, I saw something, sis, where it was like all dark. And I was turned to my side. And it was coming closer to my ear. Like, say I was like leaning like this, sleep. It was coming like right here. And I was hearing it breathe in my face. I remember that. I remember it like it was yesterday. There are spiritual principalities out here. There are demonic beings that's out here trying to destroy us. They are our enemy. Not human beings. Not flesh and blood. Your enemy is demonic fallen angels. And your great enemy is Satan. In your flesh. So let's be real. There are things out here. So, sis, my advice, one, get closer to the Father. My advice, go to the Father's courts. Go to his courts in the spiritual realm and let him know what you're dealing with. Let him know that you're sick and tired of it and repent of whatever you're doing. Repent of any wicked way that you know you're living that's not of him. Repent of it. Be forgiven by the Father from it and seek Him. Seek Him daily. Ask God to keep you protected. Ask God that even though you know there's demonic angels, there are God's angels that's around here. And ask for His protection. And if it continue to happen, continue to scream out the Father. If it continue to happen, continue to know that regardless that you're standing with the kingdom of God, you will die for God, you will live for God. Regardless of your situations, you are with the Father. But I guarantee the more you dwell with the Holy Spirit, the less it will happen. So Father, right now we thank you. We thank you for your courage. We thank you for your strength and wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Father, we thank you that we are allowed to walk in your courts right now. There's no business hours in your courts. We are able, whoever are your children, are able to walk in your courts at any time. And we thank you for that, Father. The only thing you ask is thanksgiving when we come into your courts. So we thank you. We thank you for your authority. And we thank you for your mercy and your grace and your love. Father, we ask that you give Tierra the strength to overcome these situations. And not, I've learned something through you, Father. I used to ask you to take these situations away, but I've learned that you have allowed these situations to happen because you want me to gain from these things. You want me to be strengthened from these things. Instead of asking the situations to go away, we supposed to ask you for the strength to endure the situations where I may become the victor out of it. I may have learned something out of it and became stronger than I ever was. So, Father, I ask that you give Tierra the strength to overcome it, to learn how to maneuver it and learn how to manipulate it and learn how to lean to you in these situations. I pray that you give her the strength to not be afraid when it does, but to stand bold and learn how to go to you in those moments and learn how to lean on you and not to go in fear for you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of a love and a powerful and a sound mind. So, Father, I ask and thank you that you placed that on Tierra as you did with me. We 
we honor you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Tierra, I want you to know this, sis. I want you to know this. If you are a child of God, you don't have to wait for someone to pray for you. Your father hears your prayers just as much as he hears mine. Anyone who is a child of the Most High, their prayers are heard. So if things are going in a, in a wrong direction that you're not understanding, get on your knees and pray. Get in your word and pray because the best way to effectual, to, to pray effectively is to pray God's word. When we're praying to the king, his own words, it is effective. A king moves to his words. So learn how the word, the more you read his word, the more equipped you are to pray. So when you're going through things, pray. It's good for others to pray for each other, but don't think that he don't hear you. Because if you are a child, which you just said you are, he hears you. Let's put that work in, y'all. Let me read some of this. Horoscope numerology. Yeah, all those is... All those is something else. Lily, you're right. Yes, pray for Tyr. I've been getting closer to God. Well, Tierra, I hope that helped. I hope my testimony of what I've been going through helped you. And I pray that that, that things change for you starting tonight. My conditional self is love, peace, and in the presence I die with gain. But a giant hurt, I'm beautiful. Anoint yourself with the crown of your head until the soul of your feet. Plead the blood over every wall and over every door in Jesus' name. Amen. I had the chills when I woke up from that. Man. I really hope so. Yes, I am a child of God. Truth. He is all. He has all the answers. Facts. Yes, he does. She needs to know how to bind up the enemy through prayer. Facts. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of never much. God is good all the time. Yeah. So yeah, y'all. This is this is what we call maturing in the in the kingdom of God. A lot of us was taught that once you're saved, that's it. Once you say you receive Jesus in your heart, that is it. That is far from it. That is just the beginning. You have just been born now. So just like a baby, when you give birth to ladies, when you gave birth to that baby and that baby was now alive in this world, that ain't it. That is the beginning. That is the beginning of that baby now becoming mature. Now growing, now learning, now operating, now knowing what to do in this earth and how to operate in this earth. That is the same thing when it comes to those who are born again in Christ. You have now just been fully alive for the first time. Now we have to learn how to operate as spiritual beings on this earth. We have to learn how to operate and live a spiritual life in a deathly filled world. We got to learn how to cast down some things that's been on us for since we've been born physically. We have to learn how to look like the light. We have to learn how to be ambassadors of Christ. And that's what the pastors and the teachers and the apostles are for. They're supposed to teach you and train you up on how to be ambassadors of Christ. So now you have matured. Now you know how to seek the scriptures. Now you know how to pray for yourself, pray for others, fast, fast for yourself, fast for others. You now daily in your word, you now daily talking and, and communing with the Holy Spirit. You now daily watching the words you say. You now daily watching the things you do. You examine yourself consistently. You know how to cast down, there you go, cast down, cast out, bind and rebuke. We are learning these things. We're supposed to learn how to operate in the spirit realm because we're not bodies first. We're spiritual beings that live in bodies. We're not bodies that have spirits. We're spirits that has bodies. That's a big difference. It's a big difference. That's knowing who you are. Wait, I am not a body that have a spirit. You are a spirit that has a body. 
<laughs> That's a big difference. And we have to learn these things. And the more you know these things, the more you learn how to operate. I'm barely coming off milk. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, Nate. I just can see you now. <laughs> the way you said it. <laughs> I'm barely getting off that milk. <laughs> I feel you, bro. I feel you, man. Hey, let me put it this way. I feel the same. Because I've been eating a whole bunch of heavy religious food. I've been... I got off religious milk and was eating religious food for so long that I had to finally get renew my mind from the religious spirit and finally drink the kingdom milk. I had to go back on milk again because I was eating heavy foolishness. <laughs> I had to start all the way over. Y'all saw what Nicodemus did? Nicodemus basically had to start all the way over. He was, he was scholared in that and that. But when Jesus came with the kingdom message, he like, how do I do that? I, I, must, I must deny myself from all what I've learned and to renew my mind. He said, repent for the kingdom is here. Change your mind. Change your ways from your religious views of these traditions and these rituals of which you thought it was. And renew your mind and repent for the kingdom, the government of God is here. And I had to be basically brand new again. So, bro, Nathan, I feel you, bro. <laughs> Man. Amen. The devil torments us for a moment. Now his torment would never end. Woo! Anna, you speaking up? No, you speaking deep bars right there. They bind and rebuke and cast you back into the darkness. And the body is our temple. Facts. Our body is the temple. Man of God. <laughs> Man of God. <laughs> no unholy spirit has dominion over you. Facts. Luke ten nineteen. Jennifer, we now have dominion over them. They used to have dominion over us. Yes, I feel like I have to unlearn so much from my old church. Sis, man, welcome to the club. <laughs> welcome to the club. But hey, you know why a lot of people don't, you know why a lot of people do not live and walk in the kingdom mindset? Because a lot of people are afraid and too prideful to say what you just said. You just said you have to learn a whole bunch of stuff what you learned in your church. You have to learn a whole unlearn a whole bunch of stuff from the religion. You you are not prideful enough to say, well, whatever I've learned, that's it, and I'm keeping that, and it is what it is. No, that ain't is what it is. It's what the Holy Spirit say it is what it is. And if he is giving you revelation that the kingdom of God is what we supposed to be seeking. You need to unlearn whatever you thought it was. <laughs> Look, be open minded, y'all, to the Holy Spirit, not open minded to this world. You know how the world say, be open-minded. No, I'm not open-minded to the foolishness, but I am open-minded to what the Holy Spirit says because he could have me on this message right now, but another year he could say, hey, I want to elevate y'all to something I never revealed to y'all. Here you go. I'm going to be open-minded to what the King of Kings got to say. I can't think, no, the Holy Spirit taught me this 2020, but he can't teach me nothing in 2025. No, it got to be, no. Spirit say it's some things that I have not revealed to y'all. God said I only revealed to you what I want you to know. <laughs> it's some things he say I haven't even revealed to y'all. And we got the nerve to think that we got it. We got the nerve to say that no, y'all can't teach me nothing new. What what my grandfather, grandfather told me was that that was it. Yeah, 
Yeah. Be open-minded to the spirit of God and never speak, never be prideful to the point of thinking that you got it. Because the moment, look, the more I learn about God's kingdom, the more I realize I don't know. The more he's teaching me, the more I'm realizing I don't know much. <laughs> I don't know much. It's so much he, he, it's about him that what the, 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 look, the things I do know, it's like, it's like this. <laughs> I'll, I'll be thankful that the Holy Spirit used me enough and the Holy Spirit has a light on me enough that, that allows people to see him. I'm thankful of that. But I will never, never sit up here and make it seem like, oh, man, yeah, y'all better listen to me. I got, man, man. <laughs> Humble thyself and the Lord will exalt you. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Humble thyself and the Lord will exalt you. Exalt yourself and my king will humble you. And I don't know about y'all, but I had to be humbled a lot of times because I know a lot of times I exalted myself. Especially when I was living in myself and living for the world. So... I think I'd rather bend the knee willingly than be forced to bend the knee and say he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I'd rather willingly have my knees already bent saying he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because he said he's coming and every knee shall bow. Is your knees already going to be bowed? Is your knee already going to be bent or is you going to feel the pain of his power making your knees bend? Is your lips and your tongue already confessing he's Lord or his power going to be so powerful that he make your tongue loosen and it says it out of force? No, nah, man, be willing. Hey, you, you Lord, you king. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Been down now. That's that's King of Kings right there. I'm straight. I ain't trying to get blue out like that. Man. Hold on, y'all. There we go. Gladly bowing down. That's 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 there you go right there. Gladly bowing down. That's the key. That's the key. We trash juice knocked over by trash. <laughs> Facts, man. I am, I am quick to let us know. I am quick to say this about myself. And my wife is starting to say it too because she knows it's 100% facts. I am trash without Christ. I am trash. I am a trash human being without my spirit, without the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. If I'm not seeking God on a consistently basis, the trash in me try to arise. I personally have to keep my mind on the King. I personally I don't, I, if that's pay, probably doing too much for, if people may think that's just being weak or whatever, I need God's hand at all times because I know that if I know where I was when I wasn't, y'all see, y'all see the Jesus walking in with Richard and Richard walking with Jesus now, but my wife see the Richard walking with the world. I've seen that and I don't want that anymore. So <laughs> I'm straight. I'm never going. I don't want to go back to that lifestyle again. And if and if I have to stay with the Holy Spirit daily and read his word and, and meditate on him daily to stay away from that, then so be it. So be it.
sign of the king helps to helps to keep us grounded. He is the anchor. Facts. Facts. So I'm gonna say this, and then we're gonna get off y'all because we almost been on here for a good hour. Um, I made a video. I made a video about um. <clears throat> yes, I am the man who straight forgets what he looks like. It's so it's Lily facts. That's straight bars. <laughs> I'm the one who forgets what he looks like soon as he leave the mirror. <laughs> facts. <laughs> hey Lily, I'm taking that. I'm the dude that when I look in the mirror, if I forget it, I forget exactly what I look like. I'm that dude without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I take it. So look, y'all, I made a video about keeping God as the standard. So let's talk about that for a quick second. Then we up out of here and I'm going to let y'all go. I made it. The video was titling that. If God is not your standard. If God is not your standard and hear me clear, y'all, if God is not your standard, you are liable to do anything. You are liable to do whatever because your flesh is now the standard. Hold on, y'all. My bad, my bad. My mom's called. I got to call her right back. So, yeah, we got to get off soon anyway. So, if God is not my standard, that means my flesh is my standard. So that means I am liable to do anything whenever I'm in the mood to do so. So if somebody made me mad and they take me off and my flesh is the standard, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to cuss them out to the best of my ability. Why? Because my flesh is the standard. But if God is your standard... Regardless of what your flesh want to do when somebody do something wrong, you're going to do the things that's according to what God say. You're not going to walk and fulfill the lust of the flesh. You're going to fulfill the lust of the spirit. So if somebody made me mad, I'm not going to not forgive them. Why? Because as I said, there's a standard in the kingdom of God. There's no option to not forgive in God's kingdom. There's only one thing. Forgive. Because I forgave you. So I can't walk around saying I'm not forgiving you unless I'm walking in the kingdom of darkness. But if I'm walking in God's kingdom, I must forgive. If I'm walking in the kingdom of, uh, I mean, kingdom of God, I must forgive. If I'm walking in the kingdom of God, I must not hold grudges because that's not the way of the king. So because I have his standard, me and my wife was talking and we were saying that there's some things that family members done to me that if I wasn't with God, y'all, I would not be talking to them. I would not be I would not be forgiving them. I would literally be a cruel dude to them because of what they did. But I can't walk in that and claim to live in the kingdom of God. So a lot of us. I'm still talking to a lot of my family members because I lean on the kingdom. I lean on God's understanding. The Holy Spirit will make you. If you got the Holy Spirit in you, you know what conviction feels like. You cannot walk around not getting convicted. He will convict you. He will make you realize you need to stop. You need to forgive. <laughs> that's why that's why it is impossible for someone who's dwelling with the Holy Spirit to walk around two years not forgiving somebody. That's impossible. You got that's it's, the only way that's possible is you got an unholy spirit in you. The Holy Spirit is not allowing you to walk around like that, not forgiving people. It's like it's like your your mom or your daddy in the house and, and you arguing with your sibling your parents ain't about to let y'all he gonna say make up hug each other like we tell my my daughter and my son whenever they was acting silly 
apologize and hug each other. So they got to sit there and apologize and say that they were sorry. And then they got to hug each other. So they act mad at first when they hug it. And then, then they start laughing because they see that it's like, okay, whatever. But I'm not about to allow you to walk around arguing with one another. And then for days at that, hey, get over here and let's fix this right now. Apologize to each other and hug it out. So I know for a fact, if only if me, who was who was once evil and once not of God can can think of things and do the righteous things now, how much more is the king of kings going to make sure his children is not doing certain things? So, yeah, it's there's a standard living in the kingdom of God. There's a standard. And those who live in the kingdom of God abides by that standard. Even when they flesh say no, it don't matter what your flesh say. I abide and lean on the kingdom of God. That is why I can forgive you. That is why I can do these things and not do the things that I that my flesh want to do. But what the spirit say, if you walk in me, if you keep my standard, if I am your standard, you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Bruh. Now, if you made mistakes, if you made mistakes, if you made mistakes, tonight is the night to repent of your mistakes. Tonight is the night to repent of the ways that you know, like, Father, I said I dwell in you and I have been saying some things to this person that I shouldn't say. That is not your standard because those you said to keep perverse words out of our mouths. You said to speak peace, to speak love to one another. That is your standard. Forgive me, Father. I repent of that. I changed my mind today. So whenever, if you have been living a standard or have been living ways that isn't the standard of the kingdom of God, tonight is your night to repent. Tonight is your night to now change your ways, change your mind and say, Father, thank you for your grace and mercy. Because, man, if, if it was I should have died in my sins and yet you, you, you was patient and long suffering enough to say, son, wake up. So if you feel any conviction today from anything that, you know, you shouldn't been doing, but you've been doing the father is convicting you right now in love to say, son, I'm giving you another time to say, hey, I'm walking out of this daughter. I'm giving you the ability right now to say, father, help me to seek you and I won't fulfill the lust of my flesh because our father want us to walk like Christ. He want us to look like him. He want us to act like him. And one day, y'all, one day as we're learning this life here on earth, one day we will receive our glorified bodies, y'all. And sin and temptations will never, ever reach our minds and our hearts. We will not be distracted from foolishness. We will not be distracted by illnesses and sickness and tiredness and hunger. We will not be distracted by these things. Why? Because our bodies will be new and we will be glorified looking like Jesus the Christ. But to obtain that, we must have received Christ wholeheartedly. We must accept Christ wholeheartedly. And when you accept Christ wholeheartedly, that means you don't want to live like the world anymore. And you're trying your everyday life to look like Jesus in all your ways. And that's how we live this life for Christ. Every day, lean into the Holy Spirit. Transform me to look like you because I am sick and tired of living like the world. I repent of that. That's when you have received Christ wholeheartedly because now you want to look like him. You want to act like him and talk like him. So if you have not received Christ wholeheartedly, tonight is your night to do so. If you want to receive Christ, you can say something to us. We can talk right now. We can receive Christ together right now. And you can be a citizen of the kingdom of God. Or if you don't want to say it in front of others, you can hit me up in the inbox. My sister Tracy that's on here, you can also hit her up on the inbox and we can pray together. And we can talk and we can become citizens of the kingdom of God today. But this is your opportunity to do so. <laughs> 
Amen. All right, yeah, Tracy just raised her hand on there. So if y'all see her and y'all can email, I mean, inbox me after this or her if you don't want to do it in front of everybody else. But other than that, if everybody on here have Christ and have received him, go in. Tonight is the night to go in for your king and resemble him daily. Because as it says right here, we're going to read the scripture one last time and we're going to pray out at Galatians 1.10. Obviously, I am not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. So we're living this lifestyle to represent the Father. The things we're supposed to be doing is because we want to please the sight of the Father. So live like Christ all the days of your life. Try to resemble him in all your ways. He said, acknowledge me in all your ways. That's what it is to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. We wake up trying to resemble the kingdom of God all the way till we close our eyes to fall asleep. And then if the Lord bless us again to wake up, we wake up placing our flesh on the cross again and taking the kingdom, the kingdom mindset and said, today is another day that I shall serve the kingdom of God in my house. For this day, me and my family shall serve the Lord. And that's how we live this life, y'all. So let's pray out. <clears throat> I struggle with it every day. Allie, so let me ask you this question. You're saying you struggle with getting closer to God every day? Or are you struggling with, with sin or, or living in this world? Living like the world, rather. And, and homosexuality and idolatry, you will fall to these things because we're not eating the things that's going, we're not eating properly that's going to strengthen us to not do it. I didn't say when you eat God's word, you would never feel these things. The, the much as I eat God's word, anger try to hit, hurt try to hit, but it shall not prosper. Why? Because you have the whole armor of God on. So if you are a drunkard, you were a drunkard rather, but you've been eating the whole word of God. You have the whole word of God on. The That drunkard mentality may try to form a weapon on you, but it shall not prosper. Why? Because you have the whole armor of God on. If you keep, a, if you used to have an attitude, and sometimes that attitude try to hit you where you would cuss people out. But because you got on the whole armor of God, that, wesp, that weapon will form, but it will not prosper. But the less we have on the whole armor of God, that weapon is going to prosper. That weapon is going to hit you every single time. And we're wondering why are we continuously falling in anxiety? Why am I always depressed? And the answer is, we have not been walking with the Spirit as we're supposed to. 
But the moment you walk in the spirit, the moment you, you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. These are not my words, but these are the words of the king. And it's true. And his words are true. So let's pray out. Father, we thank you. We thank you once again for your opportunity to learn your word and learn how to look at you, Father, and learn how to to do it for you. Do it for the kingdom of God. Do it for the purpose to advance your kingdom here on earth. Not to do it to, to make others see me as this and to get a title and make it feel like I'm better than others and to have this type of fame. That's that's not what you wanted, but you wanted willing vessels. And you said, if you humble yourself, I will exalt you. Those are your words, Father. So we humble ourselves in your mighty hand to know that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. That, Father, we are sitting here today saying, without you, we are trash. But with you, we can conquer all things. We are more than conquerors. With you, we can do all things through Christ. So, Father, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you, and we ask that you give us more of that understanding. We can grow more in that. So whatever we have now, Father, we ask for more. You said those who have but seek for more will get more. But he said those who don't seek the little you have will be taken away. So we want more of your understanding and your knowledge and your wisdom so we can resemble Christ daily so father we thank you for that we receive it for we know that you're pouring it on us right now the desire to resemble the king of kings so we thank you and we honor you in jesus mighty name amen all right y'all as i always say your truest relationship with the father is shown when nobody else is watching you we just said right now we're not doing this to please the sights of men but we're doing this to please the sights of the father to resemble the king and we want our father in heaven to say well done i am pleased so your truest relationship is shown when you're by yourself resemble the king y'all and when them temptations try to hit take this as an opportunity for your faith to grow take this for the opportunity that your strength and your perseverance and your endurance will grow that you know that even though it's trying to form even though it's trying to prosper it's not going to why because i'm dwelling in the kingdom of god reading this word being filled with the holy spirit and got the whole armor of god on me so no weapon shall prosper let's get it y'all i love y'all and be safe and lord willing i see y'all next week on tuesday night all right peace out y'all